Next question is from John Falbert. I hear a lot about how bad red meat is for your health, but you guys often talk about eating it almost daily. Are there any actual issues with eating too much red meat? Okay, so uh, I'll answer the second part, right? Are there issues with eating too much red meat? Well, uh, you can eat probably too much of anything, mm -hmm. and it can cause a problem. That being said, is red meat uh, bad for your health? Is it, is it one of those foods that you should put in a category of you know, unhealthy? No. It's one of the healthiest things uh, that you can eat. Now, I'm not talking about processed Red meat. So I'm not talking about sausage or salami or, you know, foods that, you know, lunch meats and that kind of stuff. I'm talking about like steak, you know, uh, maybe ground beef. Are those uh, unhealthy? Absolutely not. They're some of the most nutrient dense foods you'll find anywhere. Um, and they provide a very good source of protein. The fat in red meat, this is where they get the, the, the bad rap, right? Oh, they're high in saturated fat or they're high in whatever. We now know that uh, if you're otherwise healthy, those things really don't have uh, a negative effect uh, on the body. Um, and if you get a source like grass-fed red meat, the fatty acid profile actually is pretty damn balanced. For athletic performance and strength, I can't think of a single food that is probably more beneficial for, uh, for strength and for athletic performance. In fact, if I've actually had people just switch their meat, their source of protein to red meat and seen their strength go up because of it. Yeah. No, I, I think I probably eat red meat on the daily. I think it's a, it's a staple. It's also a staple in most clients, unless I had a client that had a, a, a spe special condition or mm -hmm. absolutely hated- Some kind of outlier. Right. Absolutely hated red meat, then maybe it wouldn't be in there. But for most people, and that's it's so funny about the the stuff that comes out to say that the, the negative things about red meat, it's all in, these are the in context of people that are- are eating an absurd amount of calories over, and then we're, we're we're cherry picking data that's around the red meat. And if you have somebody in a in a calorie controlled environment, or you're writing a diet for them that they're following, and they're training and exercising, red meat's like one of the best things that should be in well, their diet. It's, it's uh, the ir irony is a lot of times you end up having to get your client to supplement, you know, for a lot of those those nutrients and things that you know they would have got otherwise from red meat, like iron, or you know, even if their protein levels are are a bit lower than they normally. Uh, you know, would be if they're including it a bit more regularly in their diet. So uh, it, to me, it's just like the body recognizes it. You know, this is something that it, it is very efficient at utilizing if, unless you have a special condition or your, you know, your, your body actually rejects red meat. Yeah. And, you know, here's the other problem too, is because we've now had decades of misinformation demonizing red meat as an unhealthy food, when you do these uh, these observational studies, and most nutrition studies are garbage because they're based off of surveys and asking people questions. I'm going to tell you something right now as a personal trainer. Uh, people almost they never accurately uh, know what their calories are. They never accurately know what their macros are. People are terrible at reporting uh, their diets. and so but so but that's most nutritional studies. So if you have decades of information telling you that red meat is unhealthy, what kind of people, because of that, will then eat more red meat or at least not taking it out of their diet? People who are not health conscious. So now you've got this bias, right? Oh, look, these people over here eat more red meat and they're also more unhealthy. Well, yeah, because for years we've been told that red meat is unhealthy. So now the only people that eat a lot of red meat are people that don't really think about their health. And the people who eat lots of chicken or fish are people who read all this information, but they also exercise. They also don't overeat. You know, the people who eat red meat also eat lots of burgers. Uh, they eat lots of fries. They process foods. They don't exercise a lot. So it's very, very difficult to, to, to break it out. But the best studies that we have that control certain things show that red meat is is a health food. It's actually a health food. It's good for you. Um, those again, those other studies put people in a category because of other behaviors. And the more we push this myth that red meat is bad for you, the more we'll start to see that. Because again, if, if you eat a lot of red meat today, you're probably somebody that doesn't care about your health because all the information you've been reading, uh, or maybe well, you didn't read about your health. Every unfortunately, you have to consider the source. You have to follow the money. You have to. All these things have to be a consideration, uh, especially any information these days. You have to actually do, uh, you know, your due diligence and find out, you know, where this information is actually coming from because there are things within the diet specifically uh, that have been proven that there's been, uh, you know, shenanigans within the studies and things. And, and, and look at the 
the look at the uh, pyramid, look at the nutrition pyramid and things that we've been taught as kids that are like, uh, you know, healthy for us. And mm -hmm. it's just you have to be able to be open to, uh, you, you know, like thinking that your your ideas might be wrong. Yeah. Well, well, here's a good example. OK, if you went back into the 80s and maybe early 90s, <laughs> butter, and, right, I was going to say, and you studied people's uh, butter and margarine consumption, here's what you would have found. People who ate butter were not as healthy as people who ate margarine. This is back in the 80s and 90s. Now, why is that? Because back then, butter was hammered as unhealthy and margarine was hammered as being healthy. So the people who were health conscious, who also exercised, who also watched their calories, who also paid attention to that kind of stuff, ate margarine. The people who didn't pay attention to being healthy, they ate butter like they always did. So now you've got this correlation, butter unhealthy, margarine healthy. Now we know for a fact the uh, it's reversed. Butter is good for you. Margarine was terrible. Margarine was these partially hydrogenated you know, oils, these trans fats that are pretty much bad for you at almost any dose. We know now that butter is, uh, is is good. There's nothing wrong with butter, and it was margarine that was bad. But if you had looked at those studies then, yep. it would have looked like the opposite. This is what's happened with a lot of these, uh, when you read these nutritional studies on uh, red meat. But when they do the controls, again, red meat is a health food. It's one of the most nutrient-dense foods uh, that you'll find. Can you eat too much of it? Yeah, you can eat too much of anything. So, of course, on the other end of the scale is uh, if you overeat anything, you can cause yourself Which, by the problems. way, that, that's, a lo that's a lot of that. Like, to yeah. eat, just overeat red meat. But, in, uh, you know, Justin, you've done the carnivore diet. Yeah. It's hard to overeat <laughs> yeah. red meat on a diet that's purely all red meat. Yeah, I mean, yeah. your, your body, get, you get so satiated from eating red meat. Where it's not ideal is if, you, if a lot of your red meat comes from McDonald's and Burger King yeah. with the fries and the milkshake on top of that. That's where all of a sudden now red meat looks oh, bad. Absolutely.